Hello everyone, this is Andrew at Crown Academy of English. Today we are doing a grammar lesson. The subject is defining relative clauses and relative pronouns. So let's get started. Defining relative clauses identify a noun more clearly. They make it clear which person or thing we are talking about. So, for example, if we look at this photograph, I can say, the man is my brother. But there is a problem with this sentence because this sentence is not clear because there are two men in the photograph. So, there's a man here and a man here. So, which man is my brother? We do not know. So, we use a defining relative clause. The man who is standing is my brother. So, the three words, who is standing, this is the defining relative clause. And it defines the noun man. So, it is identifying the man more clearly. It is making it very clear that it is the man who is standing, the man on the right, who is my brother. Okay? So, this is the defining relative clause. And relative clauses they are good because they allow us to write complex sentences. So, complex sentences are longer sentences which have a dependent and an independent clause. And they are a much better style of English than simply short, simple sentences. Okay? And we link the relative clause to the noun with a relative pronoun. So, this is the relative pronoun in this sentence. It is the word who. And it is a relative pronoun because it represents the noun man. Okay? So, it takes the place of the noun man and that links it to the whole of the relative clause who is standing. And we will look at all of these relative pronouns in detail. So, the relative pronoun who, we use it for people. And it can be the subject or the object pronoun. Example, the customer who called me was happy. So, who called me is the relative clause and who is the relative pronoun. And it is the subject, sorry, who in this sentence is the subject pronoun because who is representing the customer and the customer called me. So, it is the subject. The customer who I called was angry. Again, this is the relative pronoun who, but this time it is the object pronoun because I called the customer. So, it is the object. Whom. Again, this is for people but it is only used as an object pronoun. So, this time we say, the customer whom I called was angry. And this is the object pronoun. I called the customer. And whom is representing the customer. It's the object. So, whom is only the object pronoun. 
But be careful. Whom is only really used in very formal English. Okay, it's very formal. Um, in spoken English, in a very formal context, and sometimes in written English. But it is much more common to use who as the object pronoun for people. So this is more common. And who and whom are often replaced by that in spoken English. And I will explain that in a few minutes. Which. This is for things or animals. And it can be used as the subject or object pronoun. Example. It's a book which will interest you. Which will interest you. So which will interest you is the relative clause and which is the relative pronoun and it is the subject in this example the, because which is representing book and the book will interest you so book and which they are the subject And here is an example with which as the object pronoun. The car which he bought was expensive. So he bought a car and the car was expensive. So it is the object. And again, the word which is often replaced by that in spoken English. So let's look at that. So we can use it for people or things. And it can also be the subject or the object pronoun. Example, the customer that called me was angry. And this is the subject pronoun. So we have a choice. We can either say the customer who called me was angry or the customer that called me was angry. And here we have the word that as an object pronoun referring to a person, the customer. The customer that I called was happy. So I called the customer. It's a film that scared us. So here, that is referring to a thing. Film. And it is being used as a subject pronoun. The film scared us. The dress that she was wearing was beautiful. So that this time is an object pronoun. She was wearing a dress and it was beautiful. So that is the object. So that is very, very common in spoken English. You will hear it a lot instead of who or which. Okay. Whose. It is for people or things. And it is a possessive pronoun. It's a possessive. Example. I know a man whose daughter lives in New York. So whose. It is a possessive. And this sentence actually means that it is the man's daughter that lives in New York. Okay, the man's daughter lives in New York. So it is the daughter of the man who lives in New York. Okay? So it's the daughter. It's not the man who lives in New York. Jane works in a restaurant 
whose manager is never there. So this means that, well, the restaurant, there is a manager of the restaurant and the manager is never there. So it is the restaurant's manager is never there or the manager of the restaurant is never there. So it's a possessive. The position of prepositions is very important. And there are two choices for the position of prepositions. One, before the relative pronoun. But this is very, very formal. And the second choice is at the end of the relative clause. And this is more informal and more common in everyday English. So let's look at both choices. I like the people with whom I work. So that is very formal. We have the preposition with before the relative pronoun whom, with whom I work. But much more common, much more informal, we say, I like the people that I work with, that I work with. So here the preposition is at the end of the relative clause. That is the flat in which my parents live. In which, so the preposition in is before the relative pronoun which. Remember that is formal. And the informal way is that is the flat which my parents live in. So the preposition in is now at the end of the sentence and the relative pronoun is at the beginning of the clause. However, be careful. Um, for choice number one, um, there is an exception for choice number one. And who or that are not used after prepositions. So, for example, we cannot say, I like the people with who I work. That is wrong. And we cannot say, that is the flat in that my parents live. Okay? So, that is wrong, that is wrong, but that is correct. Well, all of these are correct. Okay? Another rule is that the relative pronoun can be omitted when it is the object of the clause. Omitted, this means that we can um, we can miss it out. We can not put it there. So it is only when it is the object. So here is an example um, with the relative pronoun. The customer who I called was very happy. So that is correct. But we can omit, if we want to, we can omit the relative pronoun. So we can simply say, the customer I called was very happy. And that is also correct. So the meaning of both of these sentences is the same. We have just um, omitted the word who. He is eating the sandwich that you made. And if we omit the relative pronoun, we say, he is eating the sandwich you made. Okay? Notice that in both of these examples, the relative pronoun is the object of the clause. I called the customer. Um, you made the sandwich. Okay? It's the object. But be careful. When the relative pronoun is the subject of the clause, it cannot be omitted. Um, so it is compulsory. The relative pronoun is compulsory 
if it is the subject of the clause. Example, the customer who called me was angry. But we cannot say, the customer called me yesterday was angry. That would be wrong. Okay? We must keep the relative pronoun when it is the subject. The punctuation, this is the last rule. Punctuation rule. We do not use commas when writing defining relative clauses. For example, here we have the sentence without commas. And this is correct. It's a book which will interest you. And here it is with a comma. This is the comma here in red. It's a book which will interest you. Okay, so that is wrong. It's a common mistake, so um, that is why I'm explaining it. The girl who is talking to Mark is my sister. And so that is correct. But with a comma, with two commas, it is wrong. Okay? So, we do not use commas when writing defining relative clauses. However, we only use commas when writing non defining relative clauses. So this is a different type of relative clause and I will explain this type of relative clause in a different video. Okay, But just understand that for defining relative clauses everything I explained in this video you do not use commas. Okay, so there we are. That is the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, here are some other videos which you might be interested in watching. Okay, so my name is Andrew at Crown Academy of English. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.